Good morning, everyone. Doug Simonian over at New York Metro Weather with your latest free premium video discussion. These videos are usually premium videos, um, but for this Memorial Day weekend, uh, we decided to make this free so that everyone could um, get our latest view on the weather for the rest of this Memorial Day weekend, along with some good meteorological analysis to go along with it. For more videos like this, um, just feel free to sign up for our premium subscription. So anyway, um, as far as the weather is concerned, Saturday was not the worst weather day, but unfortunately it was somewhat cloudy in the afternoon and a little bit chilly for this time of year. And Sunday will be more of the same, though hopefully a little bit sunnier at times. So let's just get go through the reasoning. This is the four panel plot on the latest NAM weather model. And the, the top left is the uh, surface pressures and the, uh, and the winds and the 1,500 millibar atmospheric thicknesses. The top right is air, air and 50, 50 millibar um, winds and heights and temperatures. The bottom left is 500 millibar um, heights, winds, and vorticity. And the bottom right is 300 millibars heights and winds. So we see that um, there's an area of low pressure well off to the west associated with a, a trough and a disturbance in the Great Lakes, and a high pressure or somewhat higher pressures off to the east. So the gradient between them um, forces a southeast flow, onshore flow, um, off the Atlantic. And the Atlantic temperatures are still pretty chilly for this time of year. So that will prevent things from warming up too much on Sunday. There's also this little area of vorticity that is sneaking in ahead of the main trough, and that will serve to help uh, trigger some clouds as well. So then as we move, uh, so the, this, this previous image was valid for 2 p.m., and now this next image is valid for 5 p.m. So this little area of vorticity is still um, wreaking havoc into the area and triggering some clouds, although uh, we do not think there will actually be any rain as the main system is still well off to the west. Looking at the, uh, the surface temperatures, this is valid at 2 p.m., we see that the southeast winds are actually causing temperatures to be a lot cooler along the immediate coast. The NAM model is actually showing temperatures in the, only in the upper 50s to around 60 along the south shore of Long Island. That might be a little bit too extreme. It's probably going to be maybe in the low 60s, but it still goes to show that the onshore flow is really going to keep things pretty chilly. And then for the rest of the area, um, generally temperatures only holding in the mid to upper 60s. It may actually end up being a couple degrees warmer than that, but it does go to show that you know, the onshore flow will keep things chilly. But then further inland in southwest New Jersey, uh, mid to upper 70s are possible. Um, so then we move three hours later to 5 p.m. More of the same temperature generally in the, in the 60s across the region with the onshore flow. So it's really not the best of beach days, um, to say the least. As far as cloud cover is concerned, so there is some hope that we may be able to avoid the thickest of the clouds. This is actually the, the NAM model again valid for 11 a.m. We see that we're initially socked in complete overcast but then there's some pat breaks of sun a little bit off to off to the west. Um, not complete sun but enough sun to where you know it might be a little bit nicer than it was on Saturday. And then as you move towards 2 p.m. there are some breaks in the clouds. Um, cloud cover goes up to 80 to 90 percent in Long Island and then in New Jersey decent amount of sunshine uh, moves into the area. And then as 5 p.m., uh, more breaks of sun across the rest of Long Island and New York City, and then maybe with some more clouds in New Jersey. This might not be right verbatim, but it does go to show that um, there could be a, a little bit of a decrease in clouds in the afternoon, though we still think there will be more clouds than sun. Um, but this, there may be some hope as far as to making things look a little bit nicer than they did on Saturday. Now we're going to take a look at something we like to call a, a model forecast sounding. So um, what this shows is the temperatures and the dew points across the whole atmosphere and the winds as well. So the lower parts of the panel, the, the lower in the atmosphere, and the upper parts of the plot, the upper parts of the atmosphere. 
So we see that in the middle and the upper parts of the atmosphere, the temperature and dew point are pretty far away. That means it's dry aloft. So the dry air aloft um, could be could help lead to some peaks of sun at times. Um, which is one, I think one of the reasons why the NAM model is actually showing some breaks of sun. But if you look at the lower levels, one, we see the winds, of course, there, it's onshore, it's south and southeast, not just at the immediate surface, but um, somewhat well aloft to up to 850 millibars. And then we see that at the, towards the surface, the, temp the uh, surface temperature and the dew point are very close to each other. So that leads to a little bit of low level moisture and some low clouds that we're going to have to be dealing with. Uh, throughout the day on Sunday and then on um, Sunday at now at 5 p.m. we see that although it's even drier aloft the the dew point and the temperature are actually very much aligned with each other um, at the immediate surface so it actually becomes um, almost saturated at the immediate surface and we see the moisture the dew point kind of spiking up um, spiking towards the right which means it's increasing so those low level moisture trapped at the surface so although there could be some peaks of sun uh, through the clouds we, there will definitely be clouds around on um, on your Sunday so um, generally we think you know maybe in in the peaks of sun that we do get there could be there is a chance that there could be um, readings around 70 degrees um, but as long as the clouds do linger around like we think they mostly will uh, temperatures will generally remain in the 60s throughout the day so maybe a better activity would be to go hiking um, rather than go to the beach and then again three hours later the same the same story uh, 8 p.m. the low levels are pretty saturated but aloft it's a little bit drier and now we'll, we'll move to the uh, the next threat of rain, which is actually Sunday night into Monday morning, the main trough with the disturbance in the, in the Great Lakes approaches the area, and there's some vorticity out ahead of it. Um, and also notice how the winds are increasing aloft too, so that means the dynamics of the, of the system are getting more so involved. And there's also going to be a frontal boundary um, between um, well, the onshore flow and then the offshore flow. So there's the boundary with the westerly winds well to the west and then the easterly winds to the east can form a nice little frontal boundary um, in upstate New York uh, moving down through uh, Pennsylvania. And then at the surface you see that very clearly the streamline winds look how uh, much well look how one how fast they are at the surface so actually right along the immediate coast there could be some um, decent winds of uh, 20 miles per hour at times but then inland the winds drop off pretty quickly but you see that the easterly winds very much converge with the westerly winds leading to a very strong and well-defined boundary this boundary is where the main uh, impetus for rain will be but we're not really going to be in this classically converged boundary so we may be able to avoid the bullseye for the rain but there is still tends to be a little bit of convergence at the surface when you have very strong winds um, on the ocean that slow down as they head inland. Um, winds moving very fast and then slowing down actually does act as convergence, which, which could lead to lift for precipitation, which is why we are still in the line for some rain, perhaps heavy at times, um, late Sunday night, probably well after midnight, maybe more towards daybreak, um, and through Memorial Day Monday morning. Then we see at 8 a.m. the disturbance becomes a little bit closer. The main areas of vorticity are off to the northwest of the area with that main boundary where the heaviest rain is. Could be some flash flooding in upstate New York. But in our area, we are still getting some decently uh, decent rain rates, light, moderate, maybe occasionally heavy, but probably more so on the moderate side. Um, in the area some good jet dynamics move into the area as well so that could definitely lead to some uh, moderate rain to start Memorial Day and then three hours later we see the rain is still lingering in the area there's a little bit of a secondary low pressure disturbance um, to the south um, which keeps the winds easterly and northeasterly which will also unfortunately keep things chilly as well throughout Memorial Day morning but fortunately 
there's drawing behind it. So Monday afternoon, the rain should end. And then again, three hours, uh, three hours later, most of the area is away from the rain. There could still be a little bit of residual low-level moisture, though, with a low pressure uh, nearby. So it may take a little bit of time for clouds to clear along the immediate coast. But maybe inland, there could be some uh, breaks in the action. The main area of vorticity also leaves the area. And at 850 millibars, we get some westerly and northwesterly winds. So that does indicate that some drying is trying to take place in the lower parts of the atmosphere, though maybe not all the way down to the surface. Another ingredient we like to look at for heavy rain, and this is called uh, moisture convergence, in the lowest 30 millibars of the atmosphere. We see there is a good amount of moisture convergence just because of what we talked about um, with how you get very strong winds in the ocean that slow down as they hit land due to uh, friction. And that slowing down leads to convergence, and if it's from a, an ocean source, there's moisture in that, so moisture convergence. So there is some moisture convergence in the area. However, the main area of moisture convergence is offshore and to the southeast, and that is away from the main dynamics of the storm. So there's a little, it's a little bit, in our area, it's a little bit disjointed between the best moisture convergence and where the actual uh, true storm system is. Because if we remember the main storm, the main area of low pressure is kind of about well off to the northwest, and the main dynamics is to the northwest. So, and the moisture convergence, as we saw, the main area of moisture convergence at 8 a.m. was kind of offshore, not really where the main focus of lift is. So there is some moisture convergence in the area that will lead to some heavy, that could help lead to some heavy rain. Um, but the main area of moisture convergence is a little bit displaced, one, from our area to begin with, and two, from the main storm. But we do have, we still, still have some moisture convergence in the area, which could help lead to some occasionally moderate to heavy rain on Monday morning. This is another forecast sounding um, for over for early Monday morning. We see that at the surface it's very stable, um, but then aloft, whenever the temperature and dew point lines kind of jut out and slope to the left um, as you increase with height, that means the temperatures and dew points are decreasing quickly with height. Um, and it's also saturated because the temperature and dew points are together. So whenever the temperature is decreasing quickly with height, that means there's instability aloft. So this instability aloft could, one, also help lead to some moderate to heavy rain, and two, lead to some rumbles of thunder um, and, meet, and with some embedded thunderstorms uh, moving through the area on Monday morning. So... Let's try to answer the question, will there actually be sunshine and warmer weather after this batch of rain on Memorial Day? So going back to the surface at 11 a.m., the, there is that secondary low that we talked about. And what that does, so you notice how the winds are turning counterclockwise with it. So well off to the west and to the southwest, the wind, the surface winds are more westerly, which leads to some more dry air and warmth. But in central Jersey and northward, the winds are still kind of onshore and counterclockwise as the secondary low pressure um, wreaks some havoc. And then um, as, as a result, the cloud cover at this, um, from central Jersey north and east, it's still 100% overcast. But then further to the southwest in central and south Jersey, you're um, a, a lot of sunshine and warm weather after the rain moves through. So you might be able to have some barbecues um, all afternoon, even in central, well, South Jersey. And then three hours later, some sunshine tries to move its way towards New York City and into northern New Jersey, though it's still mainly overcast for parts of, for most of Long Island. So there, there's some hope that maybe later in Memorial Day afternoon, there could be a little bit of sun and warmer weather. But generally, it's going to be pretty cloudy for most of the day and somewhat chilly as well. But it's it's gonna be I mean it's gonna be a close call because as the storm moves away the winds do try to go a little bit further um, more so offshore and look at this boundary it's like in the well into the 80s in South Jersey and into parts of PA and then there's a very sharp temperature gradient where temperatures only are in the 60s in New York City and Northeast New Jersey at 2 p.m. and then at 5 p.m. the boundary moves a little bit closer to the area. Um, to where maybe it could warm up later in the afternoon, but verbatim on the NAM model, it still remains pretty chilly for most of New York City 
and Long Island with clouds. But let's say this if the storm is able to move three hours faster, then maybe there is hope for even the areas like New York City, northeast New Jersey, and parts of Long Island to get sunnier and a little bit warmer later in the evening. So it will be a close call. Um, we can only hope that the storm moves away a little bit faster and that we can get uh, this warmth boundary to move into the area. But it does look good for central and southern New Jersey to, um, Memorial Day afternoon for some sun and some warmth and for you know maybe even some beach weather, barbecues after the rain moves through. But the clouds may linger a little bit longer for New York City and Long Island. So that does it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and hope it gave you a good uh, meteorological explanation as to um, why we're forecasting what we are and just a little bit of a taste of how the weather works and things we look at every day in making these forecasts. So we hope you have a great rest of your Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone who has served and helped our country uh, along the way. Um, so yeah, everyone, yeah, have a great rest of the weekend. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.